Um, first, I'm kind of stunned by that. I didn't see that coming. Um, first, I think you got to give them a ton of credit. I think we came out. I was really pleased with the way we played the first 10 minutes of the game, and we were really kind of putting it to them. And a team with that's new to this, like they are in our league, um, playing at Oakland, could have easily folded, and they didn't. Um, and they, they threw a couple punches at us, and I think we went down and never really got back up. Um, I'm very, very surprised by the outcome. I'm surprised by the game, by the way the game went. Um, but I want to give South, South Dakota a ton of credit. Um, they deserve it. Their coach did a heck of a job. And, uh, you know, we were, we were totally outclassed tonight, totally outcoached, totally, totally out everything. So uh, give them a ton of credit. Questions for the student athletes? Drew, could you just talk about second consecutive game where you guys let go of a double-digit uh, late first half lead? When when that's happening, I mean, would you guys, it, when you see it happening, I mean, what do, what's going on out there? Uh, to be honest. I really don't, you know what I'm saying? I, just, I really don't know. Um, I just try to do everything I can. Um, as a leader of this team, obviously I'm not, you know, leading good enough. Um, I just try to keep everybody together. But we just have to figure this out um, because it's, it's been the story of our team all year. And if we want to, you know, do what we want to do in the end and, and achieve our mission, then we have to turn it around. I mean, I, I think I can answer that. I think there's a constant in both those games. It was a constant. Ryan Bass on the bench and foul truck. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty easy answer. You know, our, our point guard play when Ryan's not on the floor has not been good enough for us to compete at this level. Travis, after a hot start, they, they were able to shut you down. What, what were you seeing differently after the, you know, the first 10 minutes of the game? Um, they definitely guard me, um, you know, a lot more heavy. Uh, they're yelling where to, where I was at all times. Um, I just did a, I just did a, I just did a horrible job of, you know, of letting them get to my head, and you know, I just missed shots. Thanks. Um, this is for both players, Tim Potts, Rockwell Post. Um, his coach said those first 10 minutes he really came out, both of you guys combined for uh, 20 straight points there. Can you just talk about the tempo that was successful there early on? Uh, we were just um, playing really good defense. Um, we came out with a lot of energy. Um, we were excited to play at home. But um, like when we made some substitutions and, and whatnot, the energy level dropped off. And then I don't think we were able to regain that You know, again. Um, and that's something that is important for our team is to come out with a lot of energy and play with, you know, emotion and passion. And uh, when we made substitutions, it dropped off, and then we were never able to regain it. Any more questions for the student athletes? Thanks. Questions for Coach? Uh, late in the game, could you talk about uh, there was a technical foul assessed to the bench. I think it may have been for you. Could you talk about how that may have killed the momentum going forward? You guys had cut it to nine, and then you know they went on. They closed the game on, uh, I think it was 16 to six after that. How much time was left in that half? Like 340. Yeah, three. Three what? Uh, 349. Yeah, 349. 349 when the technical occurred? Yeah, as far as I know. That's, I mean, that's what I've written down. Can I comment on it? Yeah, I, I can comment on it. Um, I think it was a, a call that I disagreed with. And there have been a few of those. And it's a referee I have a long history with. And I'm shocked that he called a technical foul because I didn't say anything to him that, that, that warranted it or deserved it. I think you would have to ask him why it was called. Especially at that critical time of the game. Uh, he's a veteran official. I think he needs to be asked that question, not me. I, I, don't, I don't know. 
fix it. I, mean, I, I turned around and walked away from him. He wouldn't come over and talk to me. I told him what I saw happen. He didn't like what I said, I guess. So and that was a travel call? That was a travel call on Duke. So, did that cost us the game? Sure. I guess it did. Uh, Coach, going off that, um, you used the timeout to challenge an elbow call with just before that technical was assessed with like four and a half left. We just talked about that and then a um, what appeared to be another elbow that was thrown uh, later but was not assessed as a play. Right. I, I uh, Valentine got hit in the head, and uh, any time someone's hit in the head, if, if it's deemed an intentional hit in the head, it's two points. I decided that I would use the challenge because if he was, we needed the two points. I mean, we were, we were behind and we needed, so I thought two points was worth the timeout. I did not know if he got elbow in the head. I know he got hit in the head, uh, but at that, the strategy of it was that timeout's worthless if we're down 14 points. If that can get us two points, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, take that. Now, the other one I thought was just a blatant intentional foul. He called the foul, but he didn't call it intentional. So, I mean, same guy, that's his choice. He's the referee. I'm just a coach out there fighting for my team. So, but the, the, the timeout was me challenging that. And a challenge means they have to go look at the monitor. And if it is a, an elbow to the head, by rule, they have to assess a flagrant foul, which allows us two shots, no matter where the interruption is. It was the first dead ball after the play took place. So uh, under the rule, I was uh, legal to make that, knowing that if, if it wasn't, I would lose a timeout. So I, you know, timeout versus two points, I, I took the, the gamble. What was the biggest spark in that run to get you guys back within nine after being down 22? Well, I think Coach Washington, um, you know, it was his idea to, to take all our bigs out and just put all littles in and just, you know, just, you know, we, we had five minutes left and we're down 22. Let's just give everything we've got and see what happens. The problem is with that team, the one thing that that team does extremely well is shoot free throws. I mean, they're, they're one of the top teams in the country in free throws, so we had to do it without fouling. And I thought we did a great job of it, you know. Uh, we had, we had had it cut down to nine. We got a couple wide open threes and missed them. And we got another stop, and then we got to travel. And then uh, the technical foul, obviously, gave them two points. Uh, Coach, in the last game you played these guys, you guys hit 14 threes. And then early on, um, you know, Vader with a hot hand. Was that part of the game plan to Well, they play zone. Them? I mean, they're, they're a zone team. They sit in a 2-3 zone. And so what they're doing is they're saying shoot the ball. And, you know, the, the they have success when teams don't make them, and they, they struggle when teams do make them. And we came out, we were shooting the ball extremely well. I think Bader went one for 11 after that. He made it first four, and then he went one for 11. Um, we'll probably struggle to beat a team that plays zone if your, you know, your top three-point shooter goes one for 11. So uh, the bottom line was we had a 14-point lead. A 14-point lead. Uh, what was the score at that time? Anybody know? 30-16. Say what? It was 30 to 16. 30 to 16 with nine minutes to go. So in the last 29 minutes of the game, they scored 82, 82 points, 81 points. They scored 81 points in the last 29 minutes of this game. So I, I guess maybe it wasn't the technical foul that cost us the game. Maybe it was our defense. But I'll, I'll, I'll go with Paul and say maybe it was the technical. When you talk about Ryan Bass being in foul trouble in the first half again, what, how do you keep him out of that? Well, he's, he's got to learn, you know, and, and um, he's going to sit there and he's going to watch us blow leads and he's eventually going to, the light's going to go on in his head. And he's, I mean, both his fouls were, you know, touch fouls 25 feet, 30 feet from the basket. Once you get one of those, you probably don't want to pick up a second. And uh, well, hopefully it's going to happen. And, He's going to sit and he's going to learn. I mean, that's, that's part of the learning process. Early on, um, you know, you build the lead, the 14 point lead. Bader starts off five for five from three point range. Was he five for five or he's five, five for five? five, five. I thought he made his first four, missed one, and then made, made his first five. So he was 0 for, 0 for 10. I think the half court yeah, heave at the halftime count. Yeah, so. We don't count those. Yet. No. no. no.
Uh, what I was going to ask, though, uh, coming out like that, was that a, a product of the team shooting well, or is it more and more? Is there something more to that, like the team and shooting is tied to Travis Bader? I don't think so. I think we've had games where Bader shot poorly and the rest of the team shot well. I mean, uh, if if they're that mentally weak that if Travis is shooting bad, I'm going to shoot bad, um, then we got a real problem. But you know, we told Travis before this game against his zone he was going to get probably 15 to 23s in this game, the way they played the zone. And it started out that way, and then they made it, and that's why I say the guy did a heck of a job. They made an adjustment, and they really, really tried to find him, and they changed their zone. We, you know, we didn't shoot poorly. I mean, we, we scored, what, 79? 70, we scored 78 points. We shot 47, 48%. I don't think, now, did we miss some shots? Sure, but... Was that the reason we lost this basketball game? No, the reason we lost this basketball game is they scored 82, 81 points in the last 29 minutes of this game. 81 points in 29 minutes on our floor. So I'm going to have to fire our defensive coordinator. But since we don't have one, I'll, I'll let him stay. Looking at turnovers again, 18 today, a couple fewer than the last game. Do you feel like uh, some of the, the better defensive efforts are being spoiled on then, you know, in turn on the on the offensive end? There there are sequences where someone will come up with a big steal and then... Well, there's a huge play in the game early where we were just, you know, we were just, they couldn't get a look, they couldn't, they, they're, they're, their point guard hit some really tough shots to start the game. And that we just said, hey, that's okay. I mean, if, he, if he's shooting with hands in his face and falling down and things like that, that's fine, that won't continue. Um, and what happened then was we had a big lead. We came down, Bass tried to throw an alley-oop to, to Raphael. They came down and made that three. Uh, the 14 got his first look, uncontested, wide open look. And uh, because of the transition in the, in the uh, turnover that led to uh, an odd man rush, which allowed a guy to get a wide open shot. And then the confidence level changes. I mean, they, they couldn't get a look and then all of a sudden they get some open looks and they steal some passes and are, are, we're very, very, uh, we don't value the possession, we don't value the ball, and that's rearing its ugly head and that's what's causing us problems. And then that makes the defense have to play in an odd man situation and that's, that hurts. And then once you gain a little confidence, 14 looked like he was Travis Bader. I mean, he, he thought he could make everything and he did. Dante Williams, big part of the, the quick comeback there. Uh, what did you like? I mean, I'm assuming you like what you saw from him today. Well, it doesn't surprise me. He makes shots in practice when he's not on the first team. You know, we, we put him on the scout team in practice. He makes shots all day. It's, you know, when he's playing with the first team, he, he has a hard time hitting the rim. And, uh, you know, we put him in and, and we've tried to milk him through this to get him, get him confidence and get him where he can play. And, you know, that was a situation that I thought he might thrive in because we were down 20 and there's no pressure. Just go out and play and maybe maybe that will give him some confidence that he could break out of it because Dante can shoot the ball. And we need a guy that off the bench that can score points. Um, and, you know, I mean, he's been as a starter. Beginning of the year, he, he won the starting position. Last year, he was started probably a dozen times. Uh, he hasn't been able to translate his ability to score in games. So we really, I really was pleased to see him make those. Did it surprise me? Not at all, because he makes them on scout team all the time. You think confidence is the biggest factor into that? I, I wish I was smart enough to know what it was. I mean, if, if I was smart enough to know, I'd get it fixed. You know, I mean, you, I'm telling you, you come watch practice, he makes everything. As soon as we take him off the scout team and put him with the first team, I'm telling you he has a hard time hitting the rim. You know, I, I, he just put so much pressure on himself, I guess. We talked to him, and I mean, I told him the other day, he said, Dante, when you go in the game, you can't take a bad shot. You know, I'm just trying to give him a little bit of belief that go ahead and miss a few times, it's okay. Right. Thanks, Coach. Yep.